Hey, hey, developers, today I'm going to show you an amazing list of manuals, blogs, hacks, one-liners, CLI tools, web tools that you should guys should know about. This is over 100 tools. I actually picked out 20 of my favorite ones I'll show you today, but I'll have a full list in the description, so make sure you stay tuned and watch all the way to the end. And before we get too far, let me have a quick word from our sponsor, and that is my course, Create Awesome Vue.js Apps with Nux.js. I'll put a link in the description below, or you can go to school.programwitheric.com. You can see here I offer amazing uh, course here. It actually basically, basically it's two courses in one. You can learn all about Vue.js. You can learn all about Nux.js, which if you don't know, is the server-side rendering framework for Vue.js has some really cool features so make sure you check it out links in the description below and if you use the coupon co code YouTube you'll get an additional discount and uh, you can also get one hour or four hours of coaching with me if you guys are interested in that and you can see uh, the link in the description below about that all right so I thought since there is so many cool uh, blogs and links and tools that I would just go ahead and go through my favorite ones in this video today. Uh, if you like a full list, like I said, there's a link in the description for it, and I'll talk about why I like these tools. So let's begin. So the first one I want to talk about is Oh My Z ZSH or Zish. So this is a terminal. Basically, you can install this on your Mac or Linux box. Actually, I got this working on my Ubuntu box too. I have a Z shell. I'm running actually on my Windows subsystem for Linux box too. So it's pretty easy. What it is, it's like a terminal like you've never seen before. Uh, it's So it kind of gives you some cool features. It offers plugins to your terminal. What's this really neat? Uh, it's open source. It's really easy. Of course, this is absolutely free to install. Uh, I like the Git plugin. It makes it really easy to do pushes and pulls and everything for it. Uh, so I would check that out first at omyz.sh. The second tool I'd like to talk about is Oh My Fish or Oh My Fish. So the Fish Shell framework is kind of the biggest competitor to Z Shell, a Zish, I should say. There's actually Z Shell too, but we'll get to that later. Um, so Fish has some similar configurations. It has, I believe, it has plugins and things like that. I haven't used it, but I know a lot of people like this. I know some people swear up and down that Oh My Fish is is better than Zish. So it's really up to you. You can add actually add repositories. I believe there's tons of plugins you can add to it. Um, you can do snippets. It has a lot of cool stuff. And what you'll find is as you get farther and farther in the web development world, you're going to use the command line more and more. And having a really solid shell will make things a lot easier. And once you become pretty good at the shell, you, you'll run a lot faster. You'll move a lot faster. The third shell I want to talk about is bash it it's a community bash framework I've never used this either but I've heard good things it includes auto completion themes aliases custom functions a few stolen pieces from Steve Losh and more so if you want to if you want to upgrade the shell that you have on your Mac or your Ubuntu box this would be one you should look at basically it, the the one that comes with your Mac is fine but once you get more advanced uh, you, you probably want to look at installing one of these different shells. It feels a little scary at first if you've never done it, but this, the directions are super simple and it's well worth doing. Another tool that I really enjoy that I highly recommend is Tmux. So that's a, it's a terminal multiplexer. It lets you switch easily between several programs in one terminal. So if you've ever seen someone in terminal and they have, they're switching between different screens or they split their screen in half, they're probably using something like Tmux. Now, if you, aren't interested in Tmux, there's something called GNU Screen. Now Screen is older, but doesn't have as many features as Tmux. There's kind of a rivalry between them. Some people love Screen, some people love Tmux. Uh, I use I use both. Um, I, I kind of have actually binded the keys so they're very similar, so I can kind of switch between both. I think Tmux has a few more features. But uh, screen's great, and also if you're using an older, if you're SSHing into an old box somewhere, it probably has screen on it, GNU screen, and then you can use that. Tmux CSSH is a terminal multiplexer like screen, which gives a possible use of multiple virtual terminal screens. So it's like Tmux, but it, it comes with uh, it's it comes with some extra features. 
uh, that, once again, I've heard good things about this, but I haven't used it. Um, I wanted to include it in here with cluster SSH-like behavior. Nmap, so this is another cool command line tool. And by the way, if you guys really like these tools, let me know in the description below and maybe I'll do a separate video and we'll just go ahead and open them up in the command line and I'll show you some of them. But Nmap is a really cool way to do, uh, like, um, to, op to check different ports on a, a remote computer. Like you can see right here in their example. So I could Nmap some sort of place online and then take a look at uh, what ports they have open. I can kind of do a little bit of of security analysis on it. It's kind of a neat tool you'll end up using, especially if you're doing any ops stuff, DevOps. TCP dump's another one. Usually you see TCP dump in, con uh, in with a Wireshark. So if you've ever had to see what your system is sending out to another server and you want to see the raw bytes, this is a great tool for it with uh, Wireshark. Netcat's another one. And Netcat can do so many things when you're in the command line. You can create basically whole tunnels to different places. You can create a really easy server in one step. It's just a really nice tool, NC for Netcat. And it's nice to have if you're a web developer or a software developer just to do some quick tests. Ngrep, if you've used grep, uh, Ngrep is, is a little bit more feature has a little bit more, uh, a few more features. It says GNU grep applied the network layer. So it has uh, some network layer features for grep, which once again is nice if you're doing some network stuff. Curl, uh, curl is the command you can use from your command line to do some really neat, uh, to, to open up a server. You can go to different, uh, you can pull down some different information from a server. This is a great way to test your APIs. So if you're familiar with Postman, this you can do the same thing. And originally, this is how everyone did it. It's just using curl on the command line. This is still how I do it when I just want to really quickly connect to some API and just make sure it works. Then I use curl. But if I'm doing something more advanced, I might use Postman. Links. So if <laughs> this is just kind of a fun thing. If you ever want to, on your command line, just open up uh, a website in text only mode. This is like a like one of the first text web browsers out there. And you can get that and install it. And by the way, I think some of these you can install just really easily through like a wget and and compile the source. Some of it you might have to use like brew or, or something else if you're on a Mac. Um, open SSL, it's just another tool that you need if you're wanting to do some SSL stuff on your computer. I know I've had to install this before when I was trying to have my curl commands connect via SSL and a few other things I was doing. I think I was setting up some kind of server and I had to install it. Uh, so as, at MyCLI, that's just a terminal client for MySQL. So what you're going to find out, there's a once you get into databases, and if you're doing backend development, obviously you'll need to have some kind of program to connect to databases, and there's a ton out there depending on what you're using. But having something quick that you can use in the command line, like MyCLI, if you're using MySQL, um, for Postgres, there's a, a similar one makes things a lot easier. A uh, TLDR, this is a community driven man pages. So if you actually click on this link here, it's uh, simplified and community driven man pages. You can look to see, you can actually use this right here to, to double check what things are, or you can NPM install it. And it's just a, a quick way you can try to get uh, information about uh, different commands on your computer. It's smaller and easier to use than the built-in kind of the man pages that you that normally have. If you don't know what man pages, they're manual pages. So when you're in your command prompt, you can look up information about different commands. And this is a simplified version of it. Visual Studio Code, this needs uh, no introduction. So Visual Studio Code, I mean, we've all used it. I've done a ton of videos on it. Uh, an amazing text editor. SSL server test. I like this website because you can you can do a free online service performs a deep analysis of configuration of any SSL web server. So definitely when you're working with your, your services, you may want to pop it in here and double check things. Of course, uh, some of your DevOps people should be doing this for web development. Can I use this amazing tool that you can just type in? Like, I want to see which ones, which browsers support CSS overflow property. Once you get a clear requirement from your project management on what browsers you need support, hopefully not too many IE ones, uh, then you can use something like can I use and you can figure out what's happening 
Um, maybe you're using something that's not supported in older browsers, and I always go to can I use .com to figure that out. Uh, scan your site now. This is another scanner. Security headers, uh, securityheaders.com. You can do some scanning on there for your websites. Spellcheck is a pretty great website. It's, you can put in your shell scripts in here and then check to see if they are, uh, if everything is okay and it's gonna work correctly. You're probably not gonna use this ton as a web developer, but as you get farther on, you'll probably need to, it's good to, to use it. Pingme.io, you can put in a website in here and it does a ping test on it. Uh, this is, I haven't used this, but I heard it's kind of interesting. So there's awk, AWK, um, and this is an advanced awk usage, which is a tool that can help you um, do some important data passing, um, penetration testing stuff with it. And Wireshark, I mentioned earlier, uh, this is a handy dandy tool to, to connect to and, and see the traffic that's going through your network on your local machine. And the last thing I want to say is you can find all these links I just mentioned above and quite a few more in the this GitHub by Trimstrand. I saw this on the web dev Reddit. It's the Book of Secret Knowledge. It's a collection of awesome lists, manual blogs, hacks, and one-liners. So it's, that's where I got all these links from. So just go and check out this uh, website. All the links are in there. Has it, And it's really great for DevOps, but also some web development stuff in here too that you should probably know especially as you get farther and farther in so keybase is another great one so check it out i'll put a link in the description below so let me know is there any tools that you guys use uh every day that uh, i was missed in this quick video let me know put it in the description below i really appreciate it thanks and also i should say if you like this video make sure you click that subscribe button and share it with your friends thanks